Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, June 12th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this would be a video for you. Real quick, a couple clarifications. First off, the price you see over here will be changing and the candlestick you see right there will be moving around. That is because the market's still open for a small amount of time, but I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then second, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, AHI, and what an absolute monster move to think that just yesterday on Thursday, this thing was down below 50 cents, and now this thing has gone up over $3 on the day. Very, very impressive movement. A lot of eyeballs gonna be watching this one here moving forward. It's actually currently halted as I speak, so that is why the price is not moving. Halted just means quite literally the price stops trading uh, because things get uh, crazy. So it's halted as of right now, uh, but it will become unhalted. And at that point, you know, uh, maybe we'll catch that here on video. But regardless, let's map out some areas of support and resistance here headed into Monday. So the first key level here that you gotta think a lot of people are watching is gonna be just by drawing that trend line right there and wondering if the price can push up through there. And then along with that, with that trend line, you have that level of support. So let me change that to green to represent more so the area of support. And then for you pattern players out there, so let's make this uh, hopefully easier to see and keep it one color. So we have our resistance, we have our support, we have the explosion right there. And then for you golfers, we'll make it more visual, put a little golf hole down there. So this would be known as a bull pennant pattern. So if you like bull pennants, if you like stocks down below the $5 range with a whole lot of volatility, then I definitely keep an eye on this one next week. Next one, NIO, and what a crazy day on this one. Um, I mean, absolutely bonkers. Opening 30 minutes represented there by that green candle. Huge move up, huge volume. And then after that, it was somebody just said, hey, just kidding. And down it went. I mean, to think that there are some poor souls that were buying up there. I mean, and then straight down, it's gone. Now that is from more of a narrow standpoint. From the overarching standpoint, I'd say that there's, you know, it's still interesting here. So let me get that line out and do this because I do want to get a tread line into play. And in my mind, it'll be very interesting to see how the price behaves relative to this tread line right there, which the price, as I speak, is getting closer and closer to that level. So let me again change that to green. And like I said, the previous one was halted, so it wasn't moved around. But if you see, look over there, you can see that that price is indeed changing. And the candlestick, as I speak, is dropping closer to that green line. So in my mind, that's the big question mark that a lot of people are going to be watching. And, you know, the, a very straightforward tread line to draw. And when you have those tread lines that a lot of people are able to see and draw, those are good things because that means there's a potential self-fulfilling prophecy where you're going to have, you know, the price very, you know, uh, realistically coming down and bouncing off that level. It's happened before. Now, that doesn't mean that it's for sure going to happen. No such thing as a guarantee. But my point here is that, uh, you know, it's a very valid thought process to have. It'd be very rational to build a trade plan based around that trend line right there. If the price does try to bounce back up, key level, let me get this out of the way so you can see. Key level of resistance, definitely gonna be right up here at this level, which sits at the $8 mark. So keep a close eye on that. You can see this level has knocked down the price numerous times before. So if the price does spike back up there, keep an eye on eight. But yeah, overall, a very rough day. Next one here, TSLA Tesla, and broken record once again, higher highs and higher lows. I mean, look at this chart. I mean, it's one of those questions where it, it feels, now of course it does go down, but it feels like it never goes down uh, because just one day after another, higher highs, and then the, you know, the gap up here added the, just that much more fuel to the fire here. Um, so let's get some levels mapped out. And again, one of these dynamics that you gotta think a lot of people have drawn that trend line so not trying to impress you, not trying to imply that's a, a secret discovery. A lot of people have drawn that. So it does bring about, once again, that idea of self-fulfilling prophecies where no guarantees, but is it valid to think that the price comes up there and breaks up through there, that that break in of itself could create additional buying pressure. That is certainly a, a plausible thought process to have. Uh, so like I mentioned previously, building a trade plan around that trend line does make perfect sense, even though there are, you know, it doesn't offer a guarantee because there are no guarantees. Now, if the price does decide to pull back a bit more, which I mean, at, at some point it's gotta pull back a little bit, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just say that this thing's gonna to wanna to at least close this gap right here. Now, let me be very clear, gaps don't have to fill, uh, cause think about that, that would imply that uh, things have to happen, which would automatically mean that there are guarantees and there are no guarantees. But I mean, Tesla is just so overextended, but it is Tesla. So it's, you know, I, I also wouldn't be shocked if it just smacks me in the face and like gaps up over $300 on Monday. I, I, I doubt it does that, but um, 
almost i'm joking but almost not joking because it is tesla so you never know this thing is just so strong but yeah if, if i were pushed into a corner i would say this thing does need to pull back some more and probably come down at least that 235 mark to close the gap but all in all big picture wise very very impressive uptrend Next one here, CVNA, and big move on Thursday, and then almost just as big as a move down today, but a very cruel move, because again, it started off so strong. Opening 30 minutes, went up there, hit that level right there, so to think that there were some polar souls buying up around there, and then for it to just slam on the brakes and come completely around. Brutal, brutal day today. But emphasis on the word today, I'm gonna get rid of those line uh, words, or excuse me, get rid of those lines. But think about that word today, as in one day, because looking at things from the bigger picture point of view, the thing is still very much so in an overall uptrend. And some people may be saying, well, I'm, I'm viewing this as just a buying opportunity, and I completely see what you're saying, especially where the price is at right now from a technical point of view. So I do wanna map out a couple areas of support uh, right here at $17.50. But maybe you're thinking, well, well, why would I wait for that? Look, it's sitting right above that purple line there, 50 period moving average, it's held strong before, and I completely understand where you're coming from, absolutely. But that's why you know everybody's got to trade according to their own plans, according to their own personal risk tolerances, because some people are gonna say, no, I'd, I'd like to see it come down at least 1750. Maybe you're looking and say, no, I disagree. I don't think that's a support, and I don't think that's a support either. I wanna see it pull back even more. And you know, respect to you, you know, uh, this, like I said, uh, just you know, throwing out some ideas, but it's ultimately up to you on how you wanna play it. But moral of the story, yes, today, very, very bad day. But like I said earlier, think about that word today, as in one day. Looking at multiple days, still in an uptrend. So if you believe that this is a, a viable pullback, uh, then you have a, a very nice opportunity here because this was definitely a big old pullback. Next one here, AMC, and very, very impressive once again, uh, especially when you factor in Thursday, how Thursday started off with a big red candle, came down, hit that support, worked its way up, and is now doing battle with that pink line there, which I've talked about in past videos as that main area of resistance. So you can see it's it's not really a question of can the price break above that pink line? It can break above it. It's broken above it multiple times. The big question becomes can the price actually stay above it? Because every time the price has gotten up above that level, the momentum just disappears and it just can't quite sustain itself. So that doesn't mean that it'll never ever be able to stay above it. I'm just saying that right now, that's really, at least in my opinion, the big question mark moving forward is not necessarily can the price break that area of resistance, 200 period moving average, but can the price stay up above it? And then also real quick, looking down here at the last 30 minutes, you can see the volume coming in very nicely. So you look over there, volume absolutely pouring in. Um, and uh, so far, like I said, good day overall, but yeah, all boils back down to that 200 period moving average and can the price actually stay above it and then sustain some momentum and build upon it. Real quick, want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering next week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free live class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can use to sign up. Or if you're watching at my site, there's an area right there on the webpage that you can click to get signed up. So like I said, if you've been enjoying, then definitely get signed up for the free live class. Next one, APRN, been forever since I've seen this one, but yeah, good old blue apron. I didn't know they were still around, but nice move here. And now it's just a question of, does this thing wanna find some more momentum? So late, uh, late, late afternoon spike, and then that spike ultimately ran out of steam right there at $10.50. So that is what's ma mapping out a very well-defined area of resistance, which is good, because as we've talked about well-defined areas that a lot of people are watching, it does bring about a potential self-fulfilling prophecy. So I we'll, uh, wanna keep an eye on that here moving forward. And then if you're someone that likes to play more so pullbacks, then interesting pullback level, at least in my opinion, down there right around the $8 mark. So keep an eye on that. Uh, so it's really just a matter of what your preference is. If you like to play pullbacks and you're probably focused more so on this area of the chart, if you like to play breakouts, then you're probably more focused on this area of the chart. So it just comes down to a question of, you know, how, you know, what is your strategy? What do you feel more, most comfortable with? But the good news is, is big volume, as you can see down here, big price movement and as traders, that's the sort of things we're looking for. Next one, SOFI and another kind of common theme after today. Yeah, started off very, very nice. And then price got up around here. And then from there, the price has just really pulled back. So yes, today in and of itself, not a good day at all, but today, meaning one day. As I squeeze down and as we look at multiple days, you can see that the trend is still very much so in the upwards direction. In fact, some would argue, and I understand their argument. They're not being you know irrational at all. They're saying, what are you talking about? Look at this pullback right here. Sure, it's a pullback, but what was happening before this? Well, that big move right there. So what you actually have there is a bull flag. And again, I don't disagree. 
But I can, what I can say is that somebody that bought up around there as a day trader doesn't care about this bull flag pattern. But that's where these, like I said, videos are challenging because you know everybody's got their approach. So I'm just trying to map out as many different scenarios as possible and then allow you to take that and build tra a trade plan around it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, pull back here, as you saw, bull flag. And then as far as supports are concerned, that purple line there, pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, it's been, let me squeeze this down again because you can see it's just done a fantastic job of the price. It's just been, you know, cruising up above there, uh, you know, for the entire month of June so far. Uh, but overall, that would be a very valid area to look for a potential pullback. But like I said, today, not a good day. Overall, looking at multiple days, the trend is just fine. Next one, NKLA, I think our first penny stock. If I remember, I don't think we've had any other penny stocks, but um, nonetheless, let's get some levels mapped out here as this one had a very good day. And this is one that had been getting beat up a whole lot and is now starting to make a, a recovery. Still work to be done, but uh, certainly looking better than what it was just a, a few days ago. But first key level of resistance right here. And again, one of these that you got to think a lot of people have noticed right there at 72 cents. Price has gotten up there around several times and not been able to quite push through. So keep a close eye on 72 cents as that main area of resistance. And then as far as pullbacks are concerned, I would you know not overthink this. Keep an eye on that pink line there, 200 period moving average. We have a classic example there of that level being a level of resistance, but there's a rule in charting which states when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, they tend to act as support. And look at that right there, beautiful. That pink line, now all of a sudden acting as support. You could throw that right into a textbook if you wanted to. Uh, but overall, if the price does pull back, then I'd keep an eye down here around the 65 cent mark as that is the seemingly key level of support. Next one, LCID, which has been getting beat down in a hurry. But what's interesting here is that, yeah, it's been getting beat down. But now all of a sudden after today, we have a set of lows right here. It started to roll back over right there, but the key about that rollover is it bottomed out right there. So now you have a couple stair steps in the upwards direction. If you picture those lows as stair steps, you have some stair steps. So now that leads to a question of, all right, is this a sign of something bigger to the upside? Is this a sign of some sort of bottom that is formed? Now, let me be very clear, and I wish I could say train was this easy. Just because you have a couple of moments where you have higher lows does not mean that, oh, for sure guaranteed this is the bottom, and oh, for sure guaranteed there's gonna be some sort of big bounce, if only it were that easy. My point here is, does it at least become plausible? Is it at least rational to think at this point that, oh yeah, maybe this is some sort of bottom forming? And absolutely, case in point, if the price was just dropping, 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 and I'm sitting here saying, oh, look, this could be the bottom, you'd be completely justified to say, what are you talking about? Based on what? The price is literally still just dropping. But that's not the case, right? It has put in some higher lows. So uh, while it does not guarantee a bottom, it makes it a little bit more plausible. So if you like to play these scenarios, uh, you know, where you're trying to um, you know, catch these bottoms on stocks down below $10, I'd definitely keep an eye on it. Next one here, TQQQ, which is the ETF that measures the NASDAQ. So if you believe that the NASDAQ market is going to rise, this one will also rise. Biggest difference here is that it just allows you access at a much lower price point, which makes it a very popular ETF. And overall, good solid recovery after what was a, a pretty rough pullback, uh, you know, a couple days ago. So it has shown itself to get back up there. But now we have some, so I'm just going to delete these lines out because in my mind, we have some fantastic self-fulfilling prophecy type trend lines. Maybe the one you've, you've already seen is that one right there. I mean, check it out. Is it perfect? No, but you can see right here, generally speaking, resistance. Right on the dot, resistance. Generally speaking, level of resistance. So as I've said, and will continue to say, if this price does curl back upwards, get to that trend line and then get a good solid high volume break. Does that mean that for sure guaranteed it'll continue? Of course not, but it certainly makes it a plausible outcome. So I definitely keep that trend line in mind because like I said, you got to think that all sorts of people have noticed that level right there. In terms of levels of support, if there's any sort of pullback here, first key level seems to be right at there at about 36.20. And then after 36.20, next key level down there at... Uh, the 35.75 mark. So keep an eye on those. Or maybe you're just saying, Clay, you way over complicated that. Just use that purple line there, 50 period moving average. I can completely respect where you're coming from there too. But at least in my opinion, the most interesting dynamic about this one is not necessarily the areas of support, but all about that tread line there if the price can curl itself back upwards. So that wraps up the top 10 list. Again, if you like what you saw here, then I want you to go get signed up for the class next week, Thursday, June 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy these, then please let me know by doing two things. Hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you traded today or tell me what you're watching next week. But those two things help out the channel, help out the algorithm and the video. And as long as I know people are enjoying, I will continue to get this content out to you. So thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Hit that like button, leave a comment below and go get signed up for the class.